Stage three, my friends. So stage three, the final stage of stage select. Uh, I want to talk about the rumors around Spider-Man 3, and I'm not talking about the one with uh, Tobey Maguire. The uh, Tom <laughs> Holland Spider-Man has a lot of uh, buzz around it right now. Um, some people have been talking about, and this is even before the article, it's been a lot of people building up. This section will not be spoiler-free. Uh, this has to have spoilers. So if you just click on the video, you need to click away. It's impossible to talk about this without spoilers. Yeah. Press pause, so, see what you got to see, I agree. And, then, and then come back, bro. You got two seconds, guys. If you haven't closed out already, you're getting spoilers. All right, too late. So <laughs> at the end of Spider-Man 2, we see that Mysterio has released the identity of Peter Parker to the entire public. Um, we also see a return of J. Jonah Jameson, uh, but that's the whole, I can't, I get, I got goosebumps right now. What the fuck? All right. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Just, J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson. Ah, okay. So that scene was, that scene was pretty tight though. I'm not going to lie, man. All right. Oh fuck. Oh my God. I legit just got goosebumps again. Was, thinking about it. Was it. Super Never. unexpected, man. Unexpected. Like, that's good. So Mysterio reveals that Spider-Man's real identity is Peter Parker. So uh, you could conclude, perhaps, uh, that maybe Peter Parker needs a lawyer. And there are a couple of lawyers, uh, famous lawyers, I'll even give you, in the Marvel universe. Uh, one of them is Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, the likely choice to potentially appear in Spider-Man 3. And a less likely uh, choice is She-Hulk, who is also a lawyer. Uh, but to me, it makes a little bit less sense. So with you two guys, um, for my money, and I think a lot of the internet's money, I think Daredevil's going to help Pete out of this mess. Um, so let's talk about Spider-Man 3. Let me know what you guys think. Is Daredevil <laughs> going to be in Spider-Man 3 or what? I hope I, it is, man. I really hope it is. It's just the most logical choice, to be honest, at that point. I think I think the, the issue here is uh, it, it's it's they need somebody maybe that has been already established and they're, they're planning to just expand on the Netflix cinematic universe of Marvel. These guys, we already know them. A lot of people know them. And, and, and it's, it, I believe it's the, the perfect choice just to just incorporate him because we don't need any background story. We already know. And if you don't know, remember, it's available on Netflix. So just watch it. Yep. I think they might use the same actor as well. Um, he was a phenomenal daredevil. That show was to, so good. And I think it's a perfect way to start integrating um, the fact that there's, it's, it's a little bit strange because there's the MCU then there's Disney Plus, yeah. then there's Sony technically on Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. So it gets a little sticky and it's like, uh, I think a small cameo from Daredevil, not a small, but like a small to big cameo of Daredevil introduces those worlds. As a matter of fact, in the uh, trailer for, uh, not Blade, somebody help me out. Um, the, uh, the, the guy that... 30 seconds from Mars. Jared Leto's playing. Oh, I think. Uh, oh Morbius. 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 Yeah. So Morbius, which is exclusively a Sony movie, has the uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man not only in the graffiti, but it, there seems to be a lot of buzz around Tom Holland yeah. being around that, uh, which isn't what I want to talk about tonight. But Spider-Man is the most powerful hero in Hollywood right now. And the reason why is because he can freaking bang, match over uh cinematic studios which is insane oh, yeah. i don't think there's any here right now that has done that spider-man is too much big of a name that these studios have to sit down and pretty much come to agreements in order to share his existence which is great for us i mean i, I I'm, I'm down that one company is working on a spider-man universe while the other company is mixing them up with the avengers and all this cool stuff it's just good things for us like completely on board with that and adding Netflix, uh, Marvel Universe to the mix, bro, it just makes it way better. Yeah. What's mm -hmm. his face? Charlie Cox. That's the dude who played, um, that's the dude who played Daredevil, yes, right? Cox, yeah. Yeah. That's I feel Daredevil. like, I feel, I feel like they might, that's honestly, the guy. man, I think they already have him in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the cast already, dude. It's just, they don't really want to say anything until like, it's he, like, he know, is Daredevil, period, man. Yeah. I, I, hope, I really hope it's him, man. It just makes sense, dude, because if they do She Hawk, man, like, it, it, it won't, it won't make sense because like she doesn't even have a show out yet so 
Like you're gonna she, bring her in a cast movie. They're gonna pull a DC if they go that route, man. They might as well just stick with with Daredevil, to be honest. Here's my thing, just uh I guess maybe devil's advocate for anybody listening or just for the sake of conversation, because I think that it not only is Daredevil, but I think that it should be Daredevil. But we already know that She Hulk is getting a show on Disney Plus. Yeah. And uh Daredevil isn't. So mm-hmm. She Hulk is also a lawyer. I don't know. Yeah, I, I believe I believe this is mostly because what I mentioned, uh, being established, like they, they will have to work their way up with if they allows to She Hulk be uh peter parker's lawyer because the audience don't know this character yet and, and they haven't made that click uh it's gonna take them longer I, i'm not saying it's not possible i mean i think if anything marvel has shows within the years that it's everything it's doable like pretty much making ant-man like like cool like a, like a cool hero it's an achievement so if anything Ant-Man's anybody can do it cool. how dare you <laughs> i mean to be honest with you <laughs> Uh, no, it is. But I, when I went to that movie, I was like, "Man, Ant Man, I don't know." Like, like if if, if Disney pulled this off, uh, my, Disney Marvel pulled this off, I said they can do anything, and they did. I I, I agree with you. Ant Man is amazing, mm-hmm. but me going into the movie, my expectations were really low. Yeah, and that's but, fair. But uh, but uh, like I said, it's it's all about uh, developing the character. I I think the the right the right option here, it's Matt Murdock. Because we got the introduction already, we got like how many seasons? Four seasons, is it? I think it was like two. three or four. No, it was it, it was, was two. two. Yeah, it was two. Yeah, it was you're right. two, and then Punisher, and then Defenders. My yep. God, yeah, it's it's two. Well, yeah, I'm counting Defenders in my head and everything else. Well, yeah, he was two. in four seasons of TV. It, well, yeah, it was yeah. two seasons, and, and then you got him like jumping back and forth within mm-hmm. that universe. So we have a lot of content already. Might as well use it. This thing, yeah. let's go. I to go that route for sure. I I one hundred percent agree. My only thought otherwise would be because we know a hundred percent for sure confirmed that She Hulk is getting a show. Uh, I don't know, and I, I could be fact checked on this, but I don't know when. Um, what Spider Man three, Tom Holland, you know, X from Home or whatever is coming out. But uh, if it came out, let's say a month before, like in the current age of streaming and everything, if it came out a month before She Hulk. And then she was important in the movie. People renew Disney Plus so they can check out She Hulk, yeah. figure out what she's all about. She's coming out in a couple of years, though. They, they're, I think they're going to start filming next month, like production. They haven't even started filming. No, nah, I think next month they're going to start production um, for that show. Um, and I think it should be coming out either next year or the year after that. That's why well, it doesn't make man. it doesn't make sense, man. Like to put her on there because if it's going to come out two years later, like it's, they're going to have to backtrack. Or I mean, they can make it work, but it's just dang, dude. Like she's she's still kind of fresh. So that's the hot, like the hot take on Spider-Man three that I wanted. Uh, but I do have some questions for you guys, if that's fine. Um, like when you're like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so uh, Spider-Man three, um, we know that Tom Holland is only signed to a certain amount of Spider-Man movies uh, with Disney Marvel. Um, it's the third movie. Historically, Spider-Man doesn't make it past three movies. Tom Holland has made it into several now. Um, I want to know what you guys are thinking about this movie. Do you guys think that we'll see Venom, Spider-Man, uh, Homecoming, and Far From Home both allude to the Sinister Six? Um, in fact, in the end credits, we see um, not Scorpio. Why I'm Scorpion? Um, like we see the Sinister Six be coming together. Do you guys think we're going to get a Venom? Uh, do you guys think that we're going to see the Sinister Six? Um, whoever wants to start, man, I want to know who you think the the villain, the main villain, and if there's going to be anything uh, extra from the third Tom Holland Spider Man. Ooh, crap, dude. To be honest, I'm kind of ho- I mean, I'm kind of hoping it's the Sinister Six because that's the same thing I got. Especially when was it Homecoming? Was it Homecoming or um, Homecoming started with, uh, yeah. um, with Vulture, Vulture, right? Vulture, yeah. Yeah, like I feel like that's what it is, especially at that scene. I mean, if they haven't watched it, they haven't watched it. But um, yeah, when he goes to jail and he ends up meeting Scorpion there. Um, yeah. Like, dude, like that's that's obviously two out of the two out of the other other four right Six. there, and then um, um, hopefully hopefully Venom at least makes a, a small appearance at that point, so that way they can if they if they're gonna end up doing like more renegotiations for like expanding the the Spider Verse or whatever, they'll they'll tackle them on, tackle them on there too. Um, maybe they might and just tie them think, all together. Can I ask because so I asked this. Uh, I already knew, um, you guys probably know, but Venom currently exists. 
uh, and he's played by Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. He does. And sure. Venom 2 is in the works. Mm-hmm. And there's more weird, sticky allusions to it being the same universe, but not the same universe. So really quick, uh, go ahead. I'll be honest with you, man. It, it, if that's the if that's the question, it, it is the same universe. There's no doubt about it. I believe mm-hmm. that uh, I believe that uh, Sony made it very clear that I mean it's not clear. This is fact. This is a fact. The the people that hired Tom Holland, I mean the owner of that of that, uh, uh, not not the owner of the actor, but the, the the people that are paying that actor, it's it's Sony movies. Yeah. So the character is theirs. So th- this Spider-Man, they're, they're not going to invest all this money into this character, to this actor, to, perf- to perform that role, become the symbol of Spider-Man in this generation for them to only use it in Disney movies. They have plans for him, big plans for him. So Morbius yeah, is all Sony, right? It is yeah. Sony. Yeah. All, all, all the Spider-Man universe, film-wise, belongs to Sony. I w- Everything. I want to bring up something real quick after Will. Yeah, belongs to Sony. So that means that uh, all, all these things that the, all these seeds that Sony is planting, planting is because they're they're interested and they're actually moving forward with their own Spider-Man universe. They're just sharing the character with Disney, but they have big plans for Venom, for Sinister Six, for Morbius. This is just a matter of Carnage. time. Pretty much. Carnage. Pretty much, yeah. Carnage. Yeah. Pretty much. This is making like the groundwork with the character of Peter Parker. But Sony, it's making their own thing with his universe. So at the end of the day, the only thing that Sony has to do is just introduce Spider-Man in this universe, and you're pretty much done. Yeah. Yep. But no, that's, that's, I mean, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Think, Manny? Oh, no, I was going to say, like, especially since since Sony's, like, pretty much tied in with this with, with, with Marvel right now in terms of, like, the Spider-Man thing. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember watching that Morbius teaser trailer that they had out um, a while ago. There was a there was like that split second where you see him like walking in jail, like in, in, in prison. And then they actually showed a flip side of like where um 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 damn I just read Keaton and, and the guy who plays Scorpion, like they showed oh, them panning. Michael Keaton is in that shit. Yeah, and, and he meets up with them. Yeah, like dude, you see you literally see Jared Leto, like it, it's it's supposedly him, but like it's the long hair and he literally walks by um Tombs and and the guy who plays Scorpion and then like you flip it onto the teaser trailer for Morbius like it's him walking past them or whatever so like for sure there's something that's gonna be mixed up. There's yeah. no there's no chance that they there's zero chance that they coincidentally both used Michael Keaton. There's yeah. and you're right and I, for whatever reason I wasn't it, I forgot somehow dude like that's that's Morbius walking past Vulture like, yeah. it has to be. That 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 caught my eye. I was like, wait a minute, and I'm like, dude, like, that that looked very familiar. And then when I ended up just rewatching the the homecoming again, I'm like, dude, this is that's this is it, man. Like, it's it's coming into fruition way better, dude. Like, dang, like I was shocked, dude. I was shocked. You, you got you got this great first great actor recruiting recruiting people, man. You you know something's big is coming. Like yeah. they're they're panning out for that. I mean, I don't know how delayed things are gonna be because of what's going on right now in the world. But that's, I believe that's the goal. It's about, it's about creating that universe. All right. So for, um, for audio listeners, um, stick around. Uh, I think I have a small, um, we're going to call it a bonus round uh, that I, I think is going to go very quickly. And if I'm wrong, then stick around for a long bonus round after the boss <laughs> bite. But for those who don't know what the boss bite is, is uh, the past two episodes, they were kind of, all right, let's, so the boss fight is, it's six minutes where it's a hot button topic, whether it just be polarized, um, you know, sort of nerd fandom, who's the best doctor, or as we recently did, Goku versus Superman, uh, just kind of hot button topics. Uh, these two will never know what the topic is beforehand. Um, I don't do any research prior to what's in my own head. So uh, it's just kind of fun. We have six minutes to do it. The six minutes start as soon as I'm done asking the question. And this week, boys, um, uh, typically I start this and I uh, I don't want to start it this week because I think that one of the two of you uh, might be not more well-versed, but I'm excited to hear what you think before. Like I, I've had time to think about it. So gentlemen, we have six minutes to discuss and we're going to start with Will. Who wins in a fight? 
between Batman and Wolverine. Wow, Batman oh. and Wolverine. Okay, so I'll say uh, both are really great uh, 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 hand-to-hand combat fighters. Uh, in this case, uh, I believe that uh, on styles and martial arts, I believe Batman has the upper hand. Uh, Wolverine is a little bit more uh, raw power. Um, damn, the thing is that with Wolverine, uh, self-healing, uh, uh, mutant ability, it, it becomes a little bit uh, hard to overtake. I mean, we're talking about a guy that actually went hand-to-hand against the Hulk in a comic book. So, I mean, even though I know mm-hmm. Batman, it's it's very resourceful, and Batman, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, gonna tr- is gonna try to find a way to overcome him. Uh, I have to give it to Wolverine in this case. And uh, I want to say really quick at the one minute mark because this is why I was so excited about this particular matchup. We are talking about comic books best strategist versus comic books best primitive instincts. Yeah, because so. I think that Wolverine can smell whatever's coming, and I think Batman can craft the best possible thing. Yeah, I think I think that if they, I'll say, if they actually encounter themselves in an unexpected situation, I believe Wolverine has the upper hand. If you give Batman time, and 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 pretty much uh, uh, basically information for him to overcome the situation i'll say that batman might can overcome wolverine but again it's 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 based on i believe in this case it's based on the situation like i i can see like a comic going on with uh them uh uh fighting between each other at at one point at the beginning of the comic uh batman wasn't ready batman wasn't prepared he loses the fight because of that and then i can see batman coming back with a plan and pretty much destroying the wolverine so to me to me it's pretty even i'll say if they go like blindly into it wolverine if you give a little bit of time to think about it and strategize batman for sure so that's just over two uh will's going with wolverine manny and i have to pull a dc fanboy i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with batman and i'm going with batman i'm going and i'm gonna go with the batman of like how he's already encountered his gods in terms of like beating the flash superman like he has contingency plans for all these guys so if you give him if he goes in there already with all that knowledge he can pretty much stop someone similar to to a wolverine is so it's pretty much a hint of superman a hint of like bane like all that stuff i feel like he'll pull those same tactics but then if it doesn't work he can like do a, a quick little he can think something out real quick on the fly just to like amplify that that first plan that first plan just to just to beat him up at that point too. I mean, he has he has the tech, he has the money to do it. Um, and it, yeah, and like I agree with Will in terms of like the the combat style. Yeah, man, he got he they're they're pretty much. I, I feel like they're pretty equal because Wolverine knows his martial arts too. He's been to he's been to all those places, especially like way back when back in the days. They're like they're both Japan. experts in martial arts. Yeah, but I, I would have to give it to Batman, man. Like, he'll he'll outwit it, even though Wolverine can sense it coming. But I feel like he'll know what he'll be he'll he'll be dealing with at that point. So we're at three and a half minutes, so we still have two and a half to go. For me, this was tough even just to craft and theorize and think about because the fact is, I was thinking about that, Manny. I was thinking about the time that Batman tricked all of the fucking Justice League by making Wonder Woman inhale poison bombs. Yeah. The thing is, is Batman is so good at planning and thinking ahead, but Wolverine, can he can expect anything. Not only that, but like Will pointed out, he is mutant healing. And typically, he's the last Marvel hero alive just because he can't stop healing. But I mean, I definitely, I hit just for, I, I hit a crossroads where I kind of imagine Batman getting the best, you know, like the dark bat suit or some of the, like the bigger ones he has um, or a batarang to the throat. But I mean, mutant instincts and just knowing exactly where he's coming from. I think it is such a close fight. I, I agree with Will. If Batman has a like a day to prepare, he trashes Wolverine. But assuming that it's just they meet and they're enemies and whatever, Wolverine just heals himself. And he, I mean, his his claws are unbreakable. Mm-hmm. Like bat, he'll mm-hmm. he'll sh- any batarang, any piece of equipment Batman has, adamant, uh, adamantium he rips through. Like it just it's it it doesn't. No metal beats adamantium. <laughs> Like he just shreds his suit. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure this it's dude can, a... he can, he can, he can, I mean, he has, he, he, he can go into the multiverse. He can probably cross paths to the Marvel Cinematic Universe real quick and figure out a weak, a weak point for the, for the anime. He's going to go back. ask Deadpool. <laughs> like... I, believe, I believe there's a few medals that do surpass Adamantium. I have to double check on that, but they're like few and really rare. So Adamantium is one of the tough for sure. Well, Adamantium, when colliding with Vibranium, just explodes, uh, yeah. at least in some of the comics I've read. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's 30 seconds. We had it five previously. So I'm just going to ask for final thoughts as to uh, how much the other one wins. So we have two Wolverines, one Batman. Uh, give me Will. So Wolverine wins. How much does he win by? Is he good? He's chilling. He's good. Um, I, I'll say I'll say he's pretty close, man. I believe that that even though Wolverine has the advantage when it comes to uh, that first encounter again, it, and, I'm, and I'm basing myself on a first encounter. Batman, no preparation, just basically on the spot. I'll still believe Batman is gonna give him a little bit of a hard time. So ten uh, seconds to go. I think we can. I think every single person here agreed with preparation. Batman wins. If they meet on a brawl, Wolverine wins. Um, but hey, that's up to you to decide. Assuming that you're watching this on video, leave it in the comments. Let us know who you think wins because it's been six minutes, so we can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> what I do want to talk about is the bonus round because when I thought of this, I could not think this lasting more than 40 seconds. <laughs> but I got a couple of DC fanboys with me that might disagree. Same question. And I'm gonna give you guys as much time as you need. Don't take more than a, you know your initial thoughts. Oh man, don't do that. We're gonna be speaking for ages, man. <laughs> you have a limit of 30 <laughs> seconds. That's too short. You have a limit of one minute. <laughs> so that, that seems doable, yeah. <laughs> you have one minute each, unless and you could agree with me, uh, and then it's 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 moot. We're good. Okay. And so, a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you the argument, and then I'm going to tell you who my winner is, and then if you disagree, tell me why, and then uh, if you, if everybody agrees, then we're fine. The same argument, except Batman versus Iron Man. Oh. No, Manny, man. you don't go first because you Batman won for you. By the way, Iron Man wins this in 20 seconds. But Will, tell me what you think. Yeah, one minute. Um, I believe uh, again, it's, it's all about preparation. But resources, Bruce Wayne has resources. Um, I do prefer Batman over Iron Man, uh, and I believe the suit Batman can can propose. I mean, Batman had a suit that went against Superman. Yeah, Superman. Mm -hmm. So. Superman is the, the, the superhero most overpowered in the world, and we agreed to this in the previous uh, 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 podcast. I'm going all the way Batman. Batman can trash Iron Man if he were. Really? To. Okay, you have 20 seconds to tell me why you're wrong. Go ahead. No, no. You think Batman, <laughs> how does he win? How? How? Just because he has like a super, so he puts on the the. It's all about Superman preparation, suit. man. The, 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 these two characters are really similar. Like the only reason why Tony Stark's can overcome all these mega heroes is because he's prepared for them. He has seen them, so okay. That's why. Danny, let me know. No, it's definitely it's mine's gonna be short and simple. It might not even be worth more than more than thirty seconds. But they they may be the same person in terms of having money and resources. Batman has more resources, but Jarvis does Jarvis does all the work for Tony Stark. Literally, he's just. He's just the guy in the suit. He tells Jarvis, hey, where's this guy at? And then that's when Tony Stark pushed the button. Batman actually has to do his work. He actually, he can stealth the run if he needs to. He can, he can he can develop some tech to like cloak his signal where he's at and just come after Iron Man like that. I mean, that, they can go back and forth in terms of tech wars, but I mean, come on, man. Like it's two, it's two, <laughs> it's two against one at that point, man. At this point, you might as well just say Alfred is just yeah. there for more support, but nah, Batman <laughs> all the way, man. Jar Jarvis does all the work, to be honest, so. I'm gonna give so, uh, I guess I'll have to give myself a minute because uh, <laughs> you're both definitely wrong. Um, Batman loses to street thugs in his normal gear without days of prep. Batman has to put on super... He has to prep for days and find fucking kryptonite to fight Superman. He doesn't have time for that. If they just mash together... First off, if you look at it or if you read it, every single one of Iron Man's suits are completely invulnerable to EMPs, which means Batman has zero chance of 
uh, disabling any of Iron Man's suits, which, by the way, shoot fucking laser beams. <laughs> Batman does not have fucking lasers. He doesn't hey, have the. Fu- Batman can bring over lasers. He just yeah. decided not to use them because Batman doesn't use guns as a moral uh, a thing. But Batman can use like freaking lasers if he wants to. Yeah. And morally, Iron Man doesn't give a shit, and he <laughs> will fucking put the atomic fucking buster right <laughs> through Batman's suit and he is eviscerated in seconds. It's a it's Over. a matter of fights done. It's it's a matter of uh, trying to overcome the the the, the obstacle man. I believe yeah. Batman knows when to bend the rules and I believe that's the only way that he was able to overcome uh Superman on and the Dark Knight Returns. It's about it's about bending the rules. It's about being able to be flexible because this is this thing I believe is a threat not to only to me but to humanity. So I'm gonna do whatever it takes to overcome it. So I believe Batman, if he puts all his resources, all his mind, and just forget about not killing, he can overcome Tony Stark for sure. That's yeah. the bonus round, guys. Let me know in the comments why Manny and Will are wrong. We will see you on the next one. Y'all got anything to say? <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm good, man. <laughs> Thanks I mean, for watching Stage Select. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye, guys. Peace.